So I think probably, Larry, we don't, I get to say somebody who doesn't need much introduction in this case. <laughs> given, given recent uh, events, I think that I don't have to read your bio, but it is, it is linked it is linked off the website if anybody wants to know who Larry Strickling is, the Honorable Ass Assistant Secretary of State, uh, head of the NTA, of Commerce, sorry, Commerce, I'm tired, uh, and uh, head of the NTIA, <laughs> here is Larry Strickling. Well, uh, thank you, Bill, and uh, thank you for having us here. I mean, no better way to show a person he's welcome than to have him fly 24 hours and then sit through eight hours of meeting and then react to what he's heard all day. So. Um, we'll see how exactly this plays out. Uh, but Bill had assured me, no, you don't have to prepare any comments, just show up and react to the group. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. But we'll try to cover any of the topics that I'm sure are on your mind, whether if I don't touch on them directly, um, do we have some time for Q&A? We'll try to, we'll try to take a few questions um, to make sure we uh, are able to address your issues. But I am extremely pleased to appear here because for 15 years people said this would never happen and I want to be able to I'm so pleased to be here to be able to say that finally the United States government has done something that Milton Mueller likes so <laughs> not that that was our goal <laughs> but it didn't hurt um, so I just have a few points I'd like to emphasize. And again, I did sit through the discussion today with the idea of trying to pick up some of the themes and trying to weave them together into some points that then relate to the action that we did announce last Friday. Um, and, I, and I will say that probably the most important takeaway for me uh, out of the discussion today is the, a, a point that was emphasized right from the beginning by Steve Crocker, right through the end, Marilia um, emphasized it again, and that's this idea that this IANA issue, the transition of the United States out of its role with the IANA functions, is really only one part of the internet governance debate we are facing this year. And, um, and if, I would tell you that one of our greatest concerns in, in the US government about this was the fear that, well not fear, the concern that by taking the action we took last week that somehow we would suck the oxygen out of this larger discussion that I will tell you in my own mind is much more important longer term. And that's the question of how do we engage the developing world and, and build acceptance of the multi-stakeholder model in countries that haven't had the same level of experience with it as uh, the more developed countries. Um, that, I think, should be the focus of Net Mundial, and, and I'm pleased from Aurelia's comments to hear that it should be a major topic down there. That's the role of this high-level panel chaired by the President of Estonia to start to think about that, and frankly, it was a very important part of today's discussion as reflected in the last panel, but that, I think, is the, the big, big set of issues that we have to be working on. Um, we have to find a way to get the developed world developing world engaged in this more than they have been. And part of that requires getting the communities in these countries, civil society, business communities, to be able to organize themselves to then provide the stakeholders that you need to have for a multi-stakeholder discussion. So it's not just a question of talking and convincing governments of the wisdom of this. It's partly how do you reach out to the economies in these countries that are struggling or, or getting to get their arms around the internet economy and how to kind of ride that economic wave that comes with it. Um, but that's what we really have to be focused on. And, and my deepest hope of what we put into play last week is that it might serve as something of a, of a booster shot to the efforts to focus on this larger question. And if it doesn't turn into that, then we should all say shame on ourselves because that's really what's at stake here, not just the question of, of who or what replaces the U.S. role in, in verifying the accuracy of changes to, uh, to the root zone. So that's kind of my first point. Um, the second one is that we did set out some principles for this transition last Friday. Um, and what I hope and what I heard today is that I think that what we laid out, which are, were very basic, but I think that they already represent a consensus of the community, and I hope that that gets 
established over in the discussion over the next few days, and in, in particular at the public session on Monday. But you know, our the four principles that we use to build the frame around the transition planning were we need to support enhance or the transition plan needs to support and enhance the multi-stakeholder model. It needs to maintain the security, stability, and resiliency of the uh, domain name system. It needs to meet the needs of the global customers and partners of the IANA services, and it needs to maintain the openness of the internet. I hope those are not controversial. We didn't intend them to be particularly controversial. We thought that these did reflect uh, consensus viewpoints, and I hope that the community is able to um, affirm that. Um, I read with great interest Milton's and the IGP's proposal, and I think the statement of principles laid out there is, is very much resonant with some of this. Um, certainly his comment about government is, is one that I think is very much in sync with what we have said, which is that um, we are saying very clearly that there shouldn't be a government-led solution to this or a solution that is intergov an intergovernmental organization. And just to clarify, because I guess it was a matter of debate this morning, we're not saying governments don't play a role. Governments are part of the stakeholders like everyone else. So they clearly need to be part of the discussion. But, um, but I think Milton's paper makes a really good point, which is you don't want to replace a single government solution with a multi-government solution. And I think that's common sense, and it's certainly something that I hope the community embraces. Um, but on the question of the multi-stakeholder involvement for all this, we've tried to make it very clear from the outset that this is broader than just ICANN. ICANN is the party with whom we contract for the performance of the IANA functions. ICANN, obviously, through these meetings and through its activities, has great experience in terms of running multi-stakeholder processes, and more importantly, iterative multi-stakeholder processes where people can, can work together on an issue over a period of time to, to reach a consensus decision. So we've asked ICANN to convene, but we've made it very clear that this is something that we expect the Internet Society, the Internet Engineering Task Force, the Internet Architecture Board, the RIRs, all of the technical community needs to be participating in this, and we expect that'll be reflected in the session on Monday and will be reflected in the process as it's designed and carried out throughout all of this. Um, we think it's essential the process be transparent. I mean, I don't know how long it'll be. It's something where it's just large groups of people continuing to meet on it, but whatever it settles on, whatever the community settles on is the right process we believe absolutely it's got to be transparent so that people can see exactly how it's playing out. Um, and we certainly um, aren't interested in seeing a top-down solution. We'd like to see this um, e emerge out of a discussion in the community that then filters up into the proposal that uh, is finally presented to us. Um, a lot of questions about accountability, a lot of discussion about accountability. And one thing I wanted to make clear, uh, I guess people read our statement, but maybe they didn't read what we didn't say. But one of the things we didn't say was we didn't put the account affirmation of commitments into play by this at all. Um, now, does that mean the community can't talk about it? Not at all. Uh, we fully expect that the discussion that will take place among the community is going to fairly quickly uh, segue into these larger questions of accountability and transparency and how well the existing AOC will operate in whatever is, is designed and, and whatever uh, the community wants to go forward with. But I want to make it crystal clear that we didn't come back and say we think that document is out of touch with the times or is past um, uh, due and we're basically saying that can work and it should still work and if the community wants to now now find a way to improve it, go to it. You're welcome to, to take it on. It, but it, in the absence of that, the affirmation is still there and will continue to operate as, as envisioned. Um, I am, I think Steve made the point I guess, a couple of times today, and I know he's made it in some of, the, of his writings, this issue of the fact that when we did the IANA contract in 2012, we had to go out and do it twice. Um, because we had to make it clear that first we took input from the international community and we reflected that in the uh, scope of the contract that we wanted uh, parties to compete for, and we had to do it twice to make sure that uh, 
uh, the winning uh, bidder was actually going to take on the commitments that the international community wanted. I do think the community has to have an important discussion about that as it thinks about what replaces us. As Fiona made very clear, our role today is primarily fairly clerical um, in terms of what we actually do with the IANA functions. But we certainly understand the symbolism of all this. That's been a source of comfort for a lot of people, but it's probably been a source of irritation for just as many, if not more, other people. But this whole question, in, in no way are we doing this in a way we're handing the keys to ICANN and walking away from it. We're asking the community to step up and say, what is it that you want to have in terms of not just replacing the technical role we perform, but how do you replace that sense of confidence that people take out of the idea that somehow we're sitting in the middle. So we do think that's going to be a very important discussion for this uh, uh, community to have. I do want to also talk a little bit about some of the international versus domestic interplay here. Those of you who are from the and have been watching the press know that already we're starting to see uh, other issues emerge out of all this. Um, and I think people need to be understanding of that, not that they should be uh, modifying their discussions or their viewpoints about this, but already we're seeing people who are com suggesting that but the U.S. is abandoning the Internet or that this is somehow going to in inevitably lead to the loss of free expression on the Internet. Um, we don't think that's the case, um, but we are being pushed by uh, some of the political elements to keep emphasizing how conditional our offer was of the transition, the idea that conditions have to be satisfied. And I think the community should simply take that up as a challenge to bring back a well thought through, um, very solid plan to us so that we can push back against some of the political pressure that's starting to emerge on this. Um, in our mind, it's time to do the transition. Um, but the community's got to step up now and really take this on in a way that uh, can reassure policymakers in Washington and, and other people who simply want to comment on this sort of thing or use it to score political points that the responsible that there's a sense of responsibility here in the community to ensure these very important uh, values such as free expression. Um, so my final point to you is as this discussion plays out over the next many months. Don't let this become a political football. We've got at least two communities that need to be really, really impressed by the discussion and the debate that has, that's going to be held. The first is where I started. It's the developing world that still isn't certain that the multi-stakeholder process is going to meet their needs. All right, well here, we've been talking about the benefits and the values of this for years and years. Now's a chance, uh, as, as I think, uh, um, Mikey said, the world is watching. Yeah, they are watching, and they're going to see, are you, is this community able to um, come together quickly? Are they able to approach this as a, uh, in, in the goal of reaching consensus as quickly as possible? We all know the multi-stakeholder process is chaotic, and there are going to be people out there looking to pick at it, that, you know, because the second audience we're dealing with are the people who want to score political points out of this by trying to say it's not working or that it's a mess or that it's chaotic. Well, we know it's going to be that way at the outset, so it's really important for this community to act with a real sense of purpose and get people engaged in this process who are absolutely dedicated to reaching a consensus outcome uh, in a responsible, realistic, maybe creative, hopefully creative way. Uh, we can't let all these extraneous issues kind of take away from the, the goal we have because there's just too much at stake here. So I hope the community on Monday is able to establish some uh, consensus around the principles we set forth, and I'm really hoping the community can step up and take responsibility for this as quickly as possible and demonstrate once and for all that this multi-stakeholder business really works and is, is the way to to move forward with these internet policy making issues uh, uh, as we work through these issues over the next many years. So thank you very much and with that I'll take some questions. Anyone like to ask questions? Somehow, oh, Avri Doria, what a surprise. Okay, Avri. No, no we, we should let the guy Government go first. Stefano. No, 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 no. Ladies first. 
Um, thank you, Avridoria. My first time at the microphone today, but I said it was fun to come to the mic. The question I wanted to ask was about the AOC, and you did invite people to, to talk about it, and I'm really glad to see that uh, it's not one of the things. That's up. There's been various conversation about getting other governments to sign an AOC. Now, there's specific roles for the U.S. specifically in the AOC that's written. So if other governments were brought into sort of an AOC mesh, as it were, is that something that you're also willing to, to talk about how that specific role that you have and that you've, you know, I've been on the ATRT with you fulfilling that role, that, that is something that could be shareable among other governments if they did sign into an AOC? I don't have fully formed views on this, but I have a, a big concern, which is that I view the commitments made by ICANN in that document not to be made to us. As Fiona mentioned, they're basically what's laid out in the bylaws. These are commitments ICANN has made to the community, not just governments. They've made it to civil society, to businesses, to te uh, technical experts. If this simply becomes an issue of, well, let's get more governments to sign the AOC, are we starting to lose that notion of ICANN having obligations to the entire community or the idea that somehow by the governments or the representatives of all of that community? So I, I see a concern if the only focus is on getting other governments to sign, because I do think the commitments are broader than commitments to governments. They're commitments to every one of you. Um, and I worry that somehow we weaken that bond if all of a sudden it simply becomes, let's get more governments to sign the same document. Because, as I say before, these are commitments are broader than that. Thank you. Okay, Larry, I appreciated a lot your uh, speech, and uh, especially when you say that uh, uh, what we were actually doing was uh, mostly clerical work, let's say, but it's not so <laughs> clerical, only because there are a number of uh, problems, difficulties, uh, agreements around, uh, and, and so on. And, um, but uh, I, I think what you said is just uh, right, that um, then uh, you, before reaching the end of the contract, uh, hopefully, that we will uh, find an agreement, I can, and the other I starts that you mentioned, has to work very heavily and trying to avoid something that uh, in the papers uh, I already read uh, about uh, uh, this action will involve uh, perhaps uh, a doubt about the future of ICANN or will involve uh, the fact that uh, there should be something more close to ITU models and things like that. So uh, uh, there will be an effort needed to explain while doing things, while reaching this possible agreement uh, just to uh, make it uh, possibly simple, because uh, I think that uh, this is not something that is uh, uh, so difficult to be done, but uh, uh, there are uh, critics and enemies that want to be, make this more difficult. So, so on that point, I mean, again, all we have teed up by our announcement is how do you transition out the United States from its role? We haven't suggested that the ICANN role needs to be re-examined. We have not suggested that the VeriSign role needs to be re-examined. We've simply looked at the question of the U.S. role. Um, and so I think it's important that the focus remain on that. Um, the, the other question is that is the U.S. somehow saying there needs to be a new organization created to replace the role we performed? And we, we are by no means saying that has to be an outcome here. Um, Again, when you, carry, when you look at exactly what it is that the U.S. does in the course of, of being in the, in the chain of root zone updates or root zone changes, I don't know why it couldn't go to machine to machine and people might conclude that with appropriate transparency, you don't need any entity in that chain. I'm not saying that's a good outcome or a bad outcome. I'm just saying it's a possible outcome and it doesn't mean that, that people have to start out saying, yes, we have to start figuring out 
what the body is that has to be formed to replace what the U.S. is doing. But that's for you all to decide. I'm just saying that we're not insisting that there be some new organization formed for that. Is that it? Seriously? <laughs> Are you that desperate to have a drink? Uh, <laughs> it, it's everybody arrived like what I did, like at 1 a.m. this morning. Yes, jet, jet lag for all and thirstiness for all. Um, if there are truly no, no more questions, you can ask Larry questions probably at the reception. Um, I think that he'd probably be willing to deal with them there too. So all right, listen, thank, thank you very much, Larry, for your time. Really.